welcome back to my channel my name is Fatima in today uh, in this video I am going to show you how we are going to do some signatures to add them into our journals our journal cover and the thing about signatures is that it can be a little bit overwhelming because we have so many choices of things that we can add to them that it becomes too much right like where do we start so this is what this video is going to be about we're just going to take everything off the table and i will show you what i do to um, make this process not so overwhelming all right so um the first thing that i think about is what is it that i'm going to use my journal now this specific journal that i'm making is a kind of a transitional journal because um, the journal that I was using before uh, was just a completely blank journal and I found that it was um, easier for me to work like that but at the same time uh, towards the end of me using that journal it was kind of uh, difficult to to like start the page because everything was so blank so uh, my goal with this journal is to have some blank spaces but also have a little bit of interest with you know other type of pages and what i'm showing you here it was two piles of tea dyed this pile right here specifically is coffee dyed uh, paper and it became too dark so i'm not going to use this paper for the journal that i'm making i am going to use the other pile that i'll be showing in a minute because that one it just it's nice but it's just too grungy for what i was going for so this pile right here is tea dyed it's a lot lighter and i'm just going to start choosing papers from this pile and the reason here i have a note of how many papers of each kind i will be adding uh to my signatures so i'm starting with this um notebook paper that i just the uh, journal that came apart a notebook that came apart and i just took some papers out like that because since my journal is bigger than usual i thought it will be nice to have some papers that is big enough that i don't need to like have sideways sideways lines so then i took also some papers from a sketchbook and dye those and this wrinkly paper that you see here is a parchment paper where i that i was using as a uh, to dry the papers inside the oven and when i finished it just looked i thought it, it looked nice so i took the paper too i'll be doing some bags and things from it and here i'm just looking at the colors of my cover so that i can focus on that and after choosing all of my blank papers i moved on to the pattern paper and uh, the reason for that is because my um my blank papers was going to be the majority of my uh, oh you know the majority of the paper that i was going to be that i'm going to be using in my journal so i chose those first to get them out of the way and everything else is kind of like accent paper and i just make sure to calculate how many pages i wanted to make sure that i have kind of like a, a good ratio of blank paper versus pattern paper versus other specialty papers like book and such so i'm trying to stick to the color scheme that i'm going for but i'm also keeping in mind what is it that i'm going to use my journal for um, some people use their journals you know for very personal intimate thoughts some people use their journals to for memory keeping some people use their journals for you know they add more pictures than anything else uh, others add more ephemera than anything else so these are the things that i'm keeping in mind and in my case um i have three kids right now soon to be four so my journal is mostly going to be used for memory keeping for my kids and um 
you know their stories so i am keeping in mind um you know i'm keeping in mind that most of the time i will probably be, be journaling about them although i i sometimes do journal about how i'm feeling and how i'm doing <clears throat> most of the time it's just about them so this is what this whole theme came from that's why i have that picture in my cover because i'm just thinking about them at this point and the the pattern papers that i took um i don't know i had them in mind by the way all of my kids are boys at this point um i'm expecting my first girl now but um yeah i tend to i tend to gravitate to kind of neutral type of papers not very flowery not very you know boyish type of papers i i guess i wanted to also add some um matte paper um one because i like matte paper but also because i think it will be relevant to some of my journaling later on And here's my note of all of the papers that I uh, want to include. And I'm just checking off the ones that I already have taken out. And now I think I'm going to go through um, book papers. Yes. I wanted to have some music uh, sheet paper. Just because I think that it's, um, this type of paper is very beautiful and interesting and um and i liked it and i never had had that to put it in my journal before i mean i had the scrabble paper one but not actual music sheet paper so uh right now i'm just going through the a pile that i have and i'm just trying to find things that would interest me and that would be relevant to my journal it doesn't have to be you know but i am i am this is my thought process like what can i put in this journal that you know have to do with me because the the whole journal itself is is a representation of you you know and and this is why i like making my own journals you know and even though you might see somebody else journals that you see oh well that's so beautiful i wish i can get something like that or i can buy something like that the bottom line is that when you make your own journal is such a big reflection of you of what you have of what you're capable of doing with the materials that you have in your house and in your you know at your fingertips right so i am just this is this was such a big pile of um book pages um <clears throat> and i got these book pages a, a lot of these book pages i received from etsy i didn't you know ripped a whole bunch of books <laughs> well i don't have access to a whole bunch of books right now so a lot of my th things i buy online um i wanted to show this because i thought this was so cool it's such a big piece i don't know i guess it used to be a magazine some sort of magazine or or um newspaper very old but i really like it and i don't know what i'm going to use it yet but hopefully in the future i'll figure it out um so i took out from that pile a few music sheet papers and um a few uh book pages also and again this is another um another example of of what i go through in my head to choose the things that i'm going to include in my journal a lot of the papers that i chose i was thinking about what my kids like or what is relevant to us and right now <laughs> i'm looking through these book pages and there's some some dark things on these book pages but i chose this one um, that blue one that just showed real quick because it's a joke and my son especially my oldest one he loves making jokes and he goes to this 
kids page a lot of the time to look for jokes and he loves to read them and I thought that was funny and I thought that was a relevant thing to include in my journal so that one with the house is also a joke you know in that page so I just um, you know I give myself a selection of things that I want to include these are um, you know the things that I do to not overwhelm myself I count how many signatures I want in this case I want seven signatures I count how many pages I'm going to put in each signature I think in this case I was thinking that I was gonna go between six and eight pages per signature I wasn't sure because I didn't want my journal to be too bulky and so um, after I figure out how many pages I will have in total then I divide those pages so I wanted a certain amount of pages that to be blank a certain amount of pages to be book pages a certain amount of pages to be illustrations etc you know and that then will give me the total of pages to um, include in my journal and once I have those type of pages out then I start thinking about well what is relevant to me what is relevant to this journal that I want to put I hope that um, these things I, I feel like sometimes I don't explain myself um, very well but I hope that what I'm saying makes sense and, and, and you guys you know can understand what what it is that I am um, saying this page is like the center of a signature and I like vo both sides so I wanted to have the whole page uh, um, in my journal so I just cut a sliver where the where it was being held by the thread and um, I was able to remove the full two pages without ripping it you know from the book just in case you know you guys might be looking for a way to take away pages like that I mean you know it's not that groundbreaking right <laughs> but yeah at um, this point I have a lot of book illustrations and there is a lot of them that I don't really want to fold um, because it's, they're going to um, shrink too much or they are going to lose part of the you know the reason why I like these pages so much so I put those aside and I will deal with them a little bit later so now I'm just going to start folding the pages that I I have and this is uh, very basic and straightforward you know you fold some pages in half and you fold some pages not so much in half <laughs> it ju I'm just trying to make the pages interesting you know you don't want all of your pages to be the same size because that's the whole point of doing this type of journals you know you have um, what do you call it you have dimension you have that look of, of found things that you just put in your journals because either you like them or because that's what you had and you know some of these pages maybe i like the one side a lot and maybe i don't like so much the other and that part would come when i'm actually journaling and then i can figure out you know what i want to do with that page to make it look um you know like it's something that i really want to have and i don't like how i ended up folding that page i think there there could have been a better way for me to do it but i was also worried about the the line where i cut it out of the book that it was just going to be 
uh, too um, fragile for me to just put the signature through it and it was just gonna end up ripping so I just folded off that part of it um, and it's just gonna go into my book that way um, these pages that I have here I chose um, not specifically this one that I'm cutting but that one and this one I chose because they are like puzzles pages and that's another thing that my kid likes to do and I thought that it would be fun to have these type of pages in my notebook and then he can come in and draw them this is a braille page and just the other day my kid was asking me about what what that is what braille is and so when i got this page i thought oh that would be very nice to put in my journal because he have asked me what this is and is something you know again that is relevant and that is related to us and you know that he can come and touch and and feel and and be part of my my journal in their story <clears throat> again this other picture this other piece of paper is pretty big and i was thinking about cutting it but i really <clears throat> i'm sorry i really like this uh, page and it was about a solar eclipse that happened in the 70s i think at some point and i thought that was interesting and also you know um my other kid he really loves out of space and the moon and that stuff so you can see the theme here everything that i'm going through and that i'm putting into the journal uh, you know it doesn't have to be like this you can just go through your things and see what you like um and and choose things that way but i am just telling you uh, what I do to to make things in my head make sense so that I don't go overboard with the papers that I'm choosing because it's very easy to you know start choosing papers and then the next thing you know you have a hundred pages that a hundred pieces of paper that you really really like and you're like okay then how am I gonna choose now you know at least that's been my experience so i try to minimize that by focusing on on the purpose of the journal and what i'm going to use it for and so and so on <clears throat> so yeah i had two different pieces of papers but this map the last one that was just so big that i just i didn't want to cut that i thought that what i had was already enough so i put that to the side and i think this will be the last page that i am um folding and this white piece of paper that you see me using a lot is just a what is it called a pattern of sort that i was using to make sure that i have the biggest size of page that i wanted to include in my journal be that size so I divided all of my papers and now I'm just going to, um, I put them into their signatures and now I'm just going to uh, make sure I like how they fit. And I seen that some of them are a little bit bigger than they should be in order to fit correctly. So right now I'm just going to troubleshoot. And what I noticed that happened when I was dividing the papers is that some of them had uh, too many short pages some of them had too many um, large pages so I'm just gonna go through my signatures again and make sure that they are kind of balanced and that I like the way that they are you know looking when you flip through them that they don't have too many you know little pages in between or little pages you know back to back you know because you you want to um uh, you want to make sure that you have a place to to write and to actually do the journal if all of the pages are small it's just not going to be balanced and i think that's what i'm <clears throat> 
that's what I'm doing here. I am swapping a few pages that I thought, okay, maybe this page will, will, will work better in this signature and then we can just switch them around. And I think now that I've done that, I keep playing with them. I just, I really like how they feel. Um, yeah, so this is what I was looking for. I think I took out some pages as well that was making it a little bit bulky. And now I'm just going to add what I call specialty things. <laughs> These are things that I have, um, like as I was going through my papers and things, I started putting them to, a side, to the side because I thought maybe this will be good for a pocket or maybe this will be good for a page extension or maybe this will be good you know to uh, add dimension or decoration and things like that texture that kind of stuff so um those are things that happen simultaneously when you are going through your papers you take some things out for later and maybe you'll have space to add them and maybe you won't but some of the things that i like to add after i have all of my pages are this type of things like a doily or a piece of vellum paper i think i i love vellum in in uh, i think it's sometimes difficult to work with because of of the material but I think it's really beautiful for accent pages and just to add a little extra. Like here, I just put that as a as a cover on this uh, on this signature because most of the co most of the signatures that I did, I used some sort of book illustration or I used some scrapbook paper to kind of make a cover but this one didn't have one that I like to put in the front so I went ahead and I added that piece of film and now it's, it looks interesting um, I have this little sliver and I think that I, what I'm going to end up doing with that is um, sewing, sewing it into the page and making pockets because that's another thing that you can add to your journals I found this envelope flip thing that I made a very long time ago like years and years ago and I never threw it away so I'm just going to add it to the journal and maybe I could use it I thought it was fun you know um, this vellum paper is from the uh, little you collection and I really love it because of all of the things it's kind of it has like a dictionary uh, words uh, printed on it and it's just talk about stories and family and children and that kind of thing so I thought that was appropriate and I didn't want it covering that beautiful page that I chose to be my front page so I just put it inside and now I just want to add a few extra pieces of paper maybe to add ex um, you know to extend a page that might be too, ch too short um, or to just add a little bit of interest to a page. Like this, this signature, it came out a little bit, um, what is it called when everything is one color? Monochrome, I think. And so, yeah, I was thinking if I wanted to add a piece to that one but I don't I really like how it looks so I'm gonna leave it like that these are some envelopes that I did with that parchment paper that I talked about and I'm just including some envelopes and because you have to have some pockets in a handmade journal you cannot just have paper you need the pockets I've made some bags and some envelopes and this envelope I made out of a paper bag and I'm just going to attach it to this and it's going to be kind of like a flip type of envelope. And it's really cool because at the end of it, you cannot even tell that it's an envelope. So it's kind of like a hidden pocket. <clears throat> and oh, this is my center page. I try to make my center pages to be a little bit interesting. 
not just a full blank page this one it the center page is full blank but is a excuse me it's a scrapbook page so I'll, I'll show you later what I mean um, this page I was debating what I wanted to do if I wanted to be a whole page but I thought and thought about it and I thought well I'm, I'm not going to write on top of it I don't think so I just want it for the texture of it and just to have that kind of as a memorabilia in my journal so I'm just going to go ahead and make a talk spot there and a flip I'm going to use it as a flip in another page and that's how I'm going to include it in my journal instead of making it a page that I would actually uh, write or you know or, or glue things to because I don't want to do that I think that page that the paper is just good as it is you don't need to do anything to it um, now I'm just going through my uh, illustrations and what I'm going to do with these illustrations because I didn't want to fold them I am just going to attach them as flip pages like this one that's one of the joke ones and um, this one is another joke I'm also going to include it as a flip this is gonna be a flip down on the page I like this one because it's really cute and it reminds me of my kid because he always have a whole bunch of things at the end of the day on top of his bed and then he just doesn't want to go to sleep until somebody come and make his bed <laughs> so I'm just going to attach that one with um, sewing all of the things that I've added here are uh, I'm going to add as you know with sewing and here I'm just showing you how it looks and that's it in the next video i will show you add the signature into the cover but yeah i hope that you uh, enjoyed this video i hope that you found it useful and i will talk to you in my next video bye bye